I'd like to put together a step-by-step -step on how to make the resin insects that I've shown in a few clips. And we're going to start with step one, which is getting out all of your resin molds, silicon molds. Make sure that if you've used them in the past, all of the bottoms are clear of any of that resin. Um, and also make sure to note if you've damaged them in the past, as a few of these are, which ones not to use. And then get out your pieces you want to use. I've got these from the freezer that have been holding their, preserving their color as well as I can. Some drier molts we're going to try this time, including some spiny flower molts. Uh, some dried flowers from the season. The status flower works really well, as well as the uh, straw flower. We also have some dried leftovers from the cockroach bins. We've got the Domino's cockroaches, as well as... Halloween hissers and the heads of the death's head which end up looking like this once they're preserved. So get everything together, start figuring out kind of where you want to put what before you even start mixing your resin so you have a plan. I use things that have passed away naturally or molts so everything here has not been killed for the sake of resin art. Instead the resin art is there for the sake of preserving these animals to be viewed past their natural life. And we'll see what we can put together. So let's make the best of these animals with such a short lifespan and get out the two-part resin. This is going to be one of the most important parts because it needs to be mixed so it's not as bubbly. So that means mixing very slowly and very carefully and very patiently. So here we go with that. And it's a I use a two-part 50-50 resin epoxy. I've used a couple different brands. Don't have a favorite so I'm not going to suggest anything. We'll get that mixed up. Necessary tools are, of course, as we've already seen, the butane torch, scissors, tweezers to get everything in place, and a stick and something to mix into that you don't mind saying goodbye to, unless you have a silicone cup, but I don't have a silicone cup yet. And set everything up. Ready to pour. And we'll pour just enough to hold everything to where it wants to be. Everything will float, so you really don't want to pour very much for your first pour. Okay, mistakes were made and we adjusted. Now we have enough things set up to take the amount of resin I got excited and mixed up. You can already feel the heat coming off of this. Um, but here we go. So everything's going to float a little bit, and if there's issues, I'm going to pop bubbles and such as I go and try to move stuff with the tweezers, but this definitely takes the most time is all of the pouring, gentle pouring, and we'll see what we come out with.
okay and I needed to do a little bit more because I did have more resin mixed up than I had stuff to put in so all of these were about two cups of resin still getting some of the bubbles out surprisingly the larger pieces will dry first the chemical reaction when it has so much uh, reaction in one place heats itself up and then uh, continues the reaction whereas the smaller ones they're less hot because there's less reaction taking place so they actually take longer to dry um, which is pretty counterintuitive uh, but yeah that's that's what it is to the first part of the resin just keep an eye on these and kind of the ones that are moving, kind of put them where you want them over time. The next hour or so will be pretty critical. And it's been about two hours. Everything's pretty tacky. Um, the larger pieces set up faster than these smaller pieces, so these are still pretty easy to touch. But everybody really wants to stay where they are. So we'll be able to add one more layer and nothing will change position and then clear the bubbles out of that. So it's again mixing the two-part epoxy in a fresh cup and slowly mixing that so there's less bubbles. And then we'll top these off with about one-third more. I also have some older pieces that when they're in the molds they get a concave top and so these are going to sit and I'm gonna pour in resin until there's kind of a bulbous top to them to kind of round off and make them look a lot nicer. So I have a few pieces here that are going to be added on that are older pieces, whereas all the rest of these I'm just going to top off. And there will be certain one of these that I should do the same process with later. So on to mixing. <laughs> morning and everything is dry. I double check by making sure that it's not tacky on the back of my nail. Uh, even when some stuff looks dry it ends up being wet. It's dry so we'll do the fun get it all out part. <laughs> And here we have all the finished products. We've got the glowy marbles, as well as uh, this rainbow scarab turned out beautiful inside the marble. Really excited to show her off. Uh, there's one big monster bubble in this marble, so this one didn't end up getting covered on the back end, but still looks really good. I don't think I'm going to correct that. Everything looks really nice. We will see how these decay. These ones were wet specimens, so they might decay over time. Our first orchid mantis male saved up and looks beautiful. I'll put that on my partner's desk. I really like doing these complex ones where you have the straw flower with a bee that somebody found me and some status flowers on the bottom. That's a really fun one. Yeah, I'm happy with this round. Thank you so much for watching. We've got some of the dominoes and question mark cockroaches. Those are really fun to show people. And in this shape, they don't quite look like a cockroach, so you can explain how pretty they are before explaining what they are. 
If you want to see any of these animals before they were in resin, check out some of my other videos. And don't forget to please the algorithm, like, and subscribe.